As computing technology has evolved, we've gone from large mainframes to personal computers to server farms. And in the last step of the evolution, we've, organizations are now putting servers, data, and applications in the cloud to reduce costs, increase scalability, elasticity, and decrease the time it takes to get IT resources. To learn more about what we're doing in this area, please welcome Bonnie Stair. Thanks, John. I'm now going to show you three examples of how we're continuing to provide new tools to assist you in getting up and running in the cloud quickly, as well as more options for how you can deploy Esri technology into different types of cloud infrastructure. The first example is that we're continuing to strengthen our relationship with Amazon Web Services, which is a popular choice among cloud service providers. Let's say I wanted to create a public-facing application, like this Atlas of Education Statistics from the National Assessment of Educational Progress. Here, the URL indicates that this application is running in Amazon's US East region. These are results by state of math scores for eighth graders in 2011. And the public can easily browse these maps by categories, such as gender, race or ethnicity, or parental education level. So how did I actually create this atlas? Well, I needed access to a data center and to GIS servers. To accomplish this, I used the Cloud Builder application, which was made available to ArcGIS users at the 10.1 release. This is a lightweight desktop application built on the Amazon Web Services API. Cloud Builder takes care of installing and licensing my ArcGIS software, putting my machine in the region or data center that I choose, acquiring my hardware, installing my geodatabase, and securing my server, saving me the time of having to do all of this manually. After I created my server site, the next thing that I did was publish my map services through Server Manager, which I can access from Cloud Builder. And if I log in, you can see the services that I created from my atlas here. Lastly, after configuring my atlas to use these maps, I uploaded my application code to Amazon's S3 storage service using the Amazon Web Services Management Console. I'll browse to my bucket in S3. And we can see the folder with my application files here. By using Cloud Builder and Amazon Web Services, I was able to get a server running in a matter of minutes so I could quickly publish map services and deploy an application into the public cloud. Along with these kinds of public applications, with Amazon's recent addition of its GovCloud region, we're also ready to support your deployments of ITAR-controlled or otherwise sensitive data and applications into this environment. You can now run ArcGIS and GovCloud and create maps and applications that can be made available to US persons only. In this application, I'm required to log in in order to verify that I'm authorized to view this controlled, unclassified information, or CUI. In this case, some data on the security at facilities that use nuclear material of interest to my current mission. Notice here that the URL references Amazon's US Gov West region, meaning that the data in the data center is physically and logically isolated to US persons only. Other types of data that you might consider putting in the GovCloud could be financial or tax information, law enforcement data, or personally identifiable information from health records. By using the GovCloud region and implementing the appropriate level of security on your services and applications, you can ensure that these sensitive data can be in the cloud and still meet security requirements. So this strong relationship with Amazon Web Services is one example of our commitment to working in the cloud. A second example of this commitment is that we're working to make sure our platform runs in other clouds as well. Let's take a look at this web application, which shows all of the national parks that have fossils, highlighting those that are designated to protect them. This application is running in Terramark's cloud, as indicated by the logo in the top right corner. Here's the same application in Map Service, running in the FedRAMP authorized CGI cloud. And here it is in Microsoft Windows Azure. 
In addition to these types of companies that provide hosted services, another option you might choose is a company like VCE, which provides private cloud infrastructure that you can run in your own facility. Here I'm using a virtual machine to access the same fossil map running on a vBlock system. We're working with these cloud service providers to ensure that you can use our technology and their environments to create applications and services that deploy quickly and save costs. So your choice is not limited to a single service provider. OK, up until now, I've been talking about using ArcGIS for server in the cloud. But as my third example, I'd like to talk about our other cloud offering, ArcGIS Online. We've seen today how powerful ArcGIS Online in the public cloud is. Many of you, however, need a solution that runs on your own private cloud or on-premises infrastructure, like we just saw a moment ago with ArcGIS for server. For this, we have Portal for ArcGIS. Here I have the same interface running in two places. The blue one on your left is running in the public cloud, and the brown one on your right is running on a machine backstage. So think blue for sky, brown for ground. The brown version provides a similar experience to ArcGIS Online with a gallery of maps and applications. For example, an organization working in Africa could have these types of resources running on local servers. Looking at my map viewer, we could also have local base maps uh, focused on our area of interest. Portal for ArcGIS provides similar capabilities to ArcGIS Online. And moving forward, the two products will be closely aligned in functionality and release schedules. To demonstrate this, I'm going to show you one of the main enhancements that you've been asking for in Portal support for Esri Maps for Office, which was a product we released last year that allows Office users to easily map their data and share it with their organization. Just like you can do today in the blue version in ArcGIS Online, in June, you'll be able to connect Esri Maps for Office to your on-premises portal. This spreadsheet from aiddata.org lists aid projects in Malawi. I've already made a connection to my brown portal and signed in with my credentials. I'll go ahead and insert a map, zoom to my area of interest, select my data, and add it based on latitude and longitude. Then I'll just zoom in a little bit more to show those individual points. Now I want to make this data available in my brown portal. I'll click Share Layer, give it a name, And now this data will be available as a service in my brown portal. It'll take a minute for this service to finish publishing. But if we switch to the brown portal interface and look at my content, we'll see those two new items added from Excel, the CSV and the feature service. So the data from Malawi is now available within my portal, along with the data for other countries that I've been publishing. Many of you are already doing this today with the blue version in the public cloud. But in June, every Office user can have these capabilities on, behind their firewall with an on-premises portal as well.